Hello again, YouTubers. Uh, this is the LeanView tutorial, uh, the first in-depth video. I'm going to go over the process box. Um, you can find it over here. Uh, shapes, material, process. Um, this is the, as I said, the first video that I'm going really in-depth. I'm not uh, employed by BlueSpring. I've never been. Um, I'm simply making these videos so that somebody has more information to start with other than um, nothing which is pretty much what I had so let's get started um, here's the finished piece after you get through the uh, tutorial which now I cannot find on the Blue Spring uh, website anymore um, it is pretty well hidden such that I couldn't find it again so um, and anyway, here's here's the process flow. We start with the supplier, go through the the different pieces, and then end up with the customer. Um, again, if you saw my intro uh, kind of overview, you have to right click and then go up to process properties. You can click on the process properties. This is where you get all of the the workings of the process box. This is what makes this different than just a Visio shape. Um, you've file tools help file save or close that's it tools set times um, just basically set what your default times are help uh, lean view homepage it'll just take you to the lean view homepage um, I have yet to use these in any 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 way at all um, then you have the five tabs general pieces waste station notes uh, the general station is where you're going to do about 95 95 or more percent of your um, data input you can have the number of stations. We're just going to leave this one at one. Um, for this particular, the injection molding, you have four people working on it. It shows right here where it, um, there's a little four. Um, starts with receipt of weekly production orders. Ends with production of orders. Um, this is this pure text. This does not affect how it calculates at all. It simply is to help you um, just make sense of everything as you, especially if you have a very complicated process. Um, flow time. This is just kind of a rough estimate. You can either have it in uh, flow time inputted or calculated. Uh, this one, the 14, is just a, it's pretty close. Uh, if we look down here, uh, this one actually does add up to 14, but um, your best guess. It, it kind of accounts for a little bit of slack time. If you want to leave it at calculated, it'll, it'll simply add up the other pieces of the puzzle here. And you can, um, again, you can either have it input. We're just going to leave this at 14. We could put 25 if we wanted to. And it wouldn't affect the actual flow time. Um, but we're going to leave it back at 14. And you can choose hours, you know, seconds, minutes, days, weeks whatever the process requires. Manual time. This is the time that people, remember these people up here, this is how much time these people are touching the, pr the product. Um, it's usually value-added time um, in, in the, the real-life setting. This is a lot of times where, where the work gets done, but it can also be as mundane as putting it in a jig, setting up a CNC machine, um, you could have all of, you could have this manual time be s completely non-value added. Um, there's a place lower down that we can enter that in. Again, we can change the hours, minutes, seconds, the time, whatever the time units are. Then there's the auto time. That's if you have a process such as this is an injection molding process, that's when the, the machine's doing its thing. Uh, people aren't touching it. It's just going off, having a happy little little time, uh, doing what the machine does best. You can change this to whatever you want. Again, time units, uh, change over time. This is where again you could, if you wanted to put the manual time of, uh, say, a CNC machine, changing it from one jig to another jig, change over between runs. You can have it either here or here. There's a lot of redundancy in LeanView to allow for you to get it as in-depth as you want or as um, just open as you want. 
normal production run one and normal pr process quantity uh, 15,000. I don't I haven't been able to find any documentation on what the difference between these two are. Sometimes it'll give you an error if you make this number greater than this number. Um, some of the other ones like the plating and the assembly. Oh, yeah, let's click save. Um, if you look at the plating, it has 15,000 and 15,000. Assembly 22 and 22,000. Um, this one for some reason has 1 and 15,000. Again, this is straight off of the tutorial for the lean view. Um, yield. This is basically your scrap rate uh, or your, your save of um, so your scrap rate on, on this thing is um, about 14 percent and that's um, percent value added processing time. You only have a 15 percent value added time. Not that high um, in, in the scope of things. Uh, down here in the calculated statics statistics you have a lot of different pieces that are automatically calculated. Your TAC is probably the, the big thing that you can look for, and that's a process total TAC time. Uh, there is a way to change that to a station. I'll show you that later. Um, concurrent units, how many is it putting out, or how many is it working at the same time, um, which again affects the TAC time. Uh, work time, station work time, all of these are automatically filled in like here you have, because of this 15% here, you have a 2.1 2 hours of value added time and 11.9, but let's say we have a 90% value added time. And there you go, value added time, that many hours uh, versus the non-value added this. Um, I don't know if you guys caught it, but I just entered in 90. Um, it automatically went to 100. To do anything on these percentages, you have to do a decimal like that, or you can type 90%. Um, and there you have, it'll actually uh, enter it in correctly. Um, it's kind of a pain, but one of the pieces of lean view, you have to be particular about where you put decimals or uh, percentage points. So there you have it. Let's change it back to 0.15, just so we don't uh, change anything here. Um, this is just pretty much the end of this one, one tab, um, except for down here you can change rework, scrap, frequency percentage, average duration. You can change all of these. You can also enter in um, something like machine breakdown, stuff like that and that, that can affect your whole output. Let's move on to the Pieces tab. Um, these are already entered in um, earlier in the, the tutorial, but this is, let's see, plastic resin. You can enter that in. Pieces per pro process unit, you can enter in, let's say, 0.02 pounds. And this just allows you to use up different pieces um, and show you what you're consuming in each process. Uh, we're not going to save it, so I'm just going to skip past it. Waste. This is actually pretty valuable if you're really looking at it in an industrial setting to try to um, lean out your process. Uh, let's say transportation. You can enter in a, a value cost for that. And let's just say 20 bucks. For transportation. Um, we can also defects. How much does each uh, defect cost you? Um, and this, this can all be tabulated um, when you run the simulation, or actually rather not simulation, but the, the calculation at the end. Uh, station. You can change, remember I said earlier, you can change it to a station tack time. The entire process tack was 0 0.05 hours you can change it and make it whatever you want. One hour, uh, you could do 0 0.06 hours. Uh, it's acting up again. Um, this is a little glitchy, I found sometimes. So we'll just go over here. Um, I can show you. Uh, well, it doesn't want to behave itself today. 
but seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, again, you can change this tack time to whatever you, you want it to be and force it to use the station tack time for just by clicking that box. Uh, notes, you can enter in whatever you want here. Here is my note. And then you can save it. The use subpath, um, that's basically adding up a whole different process um, stream. And we're just not going to um, look at that right now. That'll be in one of the later tutorial videos. Um, but again, pretty much every time you, you change something, Leandry wants you to save it. Um, whether you do or not, it's always helpful to save it because you never know when it's going to crash like it did just a minute ago and you lose a bunch of input and data. Um, would you like to save your changes this time? No, I wouldn't. Um, when you enter in a new process, it's pretty easy. Just click and drag, plop it down there in the empty space. If you double click on it, you can change the name. Name of process. There you go. Um, it shows you the little workstation and then the number there is again the, the number of people you have working there. Um, one of the, the habits you're going to have to get into is instead of double clicking to change things, you have to right click process properties. Don't do this one down here, the properties, that brings you up with the Visio properties. Um, but the process properties. You can hide the title, hide the operator, you can show callouts, show statistics. This one doesn't have any statistics, but this one up here. Um, you can see the manual time, the automatic time, um, changeover, yield percentage, all of these things. You can show them, you can hide them. Uh, you can even hide the title. We'll just go ahead and show the title. Um, there's the data again. You can push, and that'll automatically just set up a little arrow to the next one. Um, you can do finish goods, change it, changes the arrow to a finish goods. Um, you could even push to process, bam, there's another process box with an inventory in between, um, just like your standard um, lean view process. Um, you've got all the, the shapes. You can push to a warehouse. Um, you can push finished goods to a warehouse. There's there's a lot of easy things that you can do um, that save you from from going over here, clicking and dragging new pieces in here. Um, just little tricks of the trade that you can you can learn once you get comfortable using it. Um, I will make sure that you notice that each time you do that, it has a different. It it doesn't replace. It simply goes on top of. So if you want to change it, you have to make sure that you go back and delete all of these pieces here. Otherwise you'll have a lot of excess uh, excess things going on. So let's just say we push the, the finished goods to warehouse. There you go. Um, and then you can alter the warehouse or, or whatever you want to do. That's pretty much the, uh, the meat and potatoes of the process box. There, there really is not that much to it um, that's not intuitive. Um, you just go in there, process properties. Most of the, the lingo here is pretty easy to understand. So um, thank you for watching.